Welcome to Environmental and Energy Efficiency Training. Today we are building an abatement enclosure for asbestos, lead, mold, or dust control. Experienced abatement companies know that a good setup is at least 40% of an abatement job. When working with thermal system insulation or surfacing materials, you have to cover the room with sheet plastic. Some abatement work requires more preparation than others. It's important to clean and protect the room. Good setup makes the rest of the job much easier. It also prevents many safety problems. Abatement workers should always wear disposable suits. The suit includes coveralls, booties, and a hood. Sometimes suits are made in one piece, sometimes in two or three. They're usually made of a papery material called Tyvek or Clean Guard. Suits come in several sizes. The suits can be shortened by putting duct tape around the waist, wrist, and ankles. Everyone in the workroom must wear a suit. Note, the workers do not wear any clothing underneath the suits when working in the field. Gloves should also be worn to keep contaminants off of the hands. Custom fit the disposable suit to fit you. This will prevent you from creating a trip and safety hazard while working. Filters must be used to catch any contaminants in the air. Workers must wear a respirator in the work area. Respirator filters for mold, lead, and asbestos and dust are equipped with a HEPA filter that filters up to three microns. It's important to prepare the work area. The first step in preparation is to remove all furniture and light fixtures in the contaminated area. Loose debris should be removed as well. In the workroom, air should only come in through the decontamination unit. Air should only go out through the negative air machine. Seal up any places where air can go into or out of the room. Cover windows and doors with two layers of poly and duct tape. Critical barriers are applied to all openings in the enclosure to prevent airflow into and from the enclosure. Cover all of these places, windows, electrical outlets, light wells, where lights were taken out, air vents, doors, pipe chases, where pipes go through a wall. Cover air vents with two layers of poly. Seal them with duct tape. Seal the poly so that no water and no air can get in or out. Cover light wells with two layers of poly and duct tape. If you can't take the lights out, seal them up with poly and tape. Putting poly over windows and other openings forms what are called critical barriers. The first layer of poly goes on the floor. Cut the poly big enough so that it goes up the wall at least one foot. Tape all the way around the edges of the poly. The idea is to build a watertight plastic bubble inside the room. The poly on the floor should catch all of the contaminants in water. Air and water should not leak out. Try to cover the whole floor with one piece of poly. If there are seams in the poly, they have to be sealed. Overlap the pieces of plastic 6 to 12 inches. Use spray glue, glue in a spray can, and duct tape. Tape the poly to the top of the walls. Cut the poly big enough so that it comes down at least one foot onto the floor. There should be at least a two foot overlap between the poly on the floor and on the walls. Tape it two or three inches below the ceiling so that you can clean the corner. Don't tape it one or two feet down from the ceiling. Remember, the poly has to make an airtight and watertight bubble inside the room. It protects the walls from contaminants in water. If the top of the wall is not covered, it may get contaminants on it. It will probably be damaged. Tape all the way around the edges of the poly at the bottom. Poly is heavy and duct tape can come loose when it's wet. Duct tape and spray glue may not be strong enough to hold the poly on the walls. You may have to nail furring strips to the walls. Staple the poly to furring strips. Put duct tape over all the staples and the edge of the poly. Put two layers of poly on the floor and two on the walls. If there is a leak, the contaminants will get on the poly, not on the floor or walls. Workrooms can be dark and confusing, especially in an emergency. It is a good idea to make arrows out of bright tape and place them on the walls in the direction of the decon. In an emergency, the arrows will show you how to get out of the workroom. You go into and leave the workroom through a special room. It is called a decontamination unit or a decon area. The decon has a shower. Every time you leave the workroom, you must take a shower. Don't take contaminants out of the workroom on your body with you. The decon has three rooms and they have to be in this order starting from the workroom.
the dirty area, the shower, and the clean area. The decon is lined with two layers of poly and duct tape. The rooms have plastic flaps between them. The flaps keep air from moving out, but let air come in. Seal the decon airtight to the workroom. Some decons have extra empty rooms. These keep air from moving out through the decon. Decontamination unit can be either wet, shower, or dry depending on the situation. Double suiting is allowed in some situations. Double suiting is wearing two suits. The outer suit is removed in the dirty or equipment room of the decon. The inner suit is removed in the dry shower unit. Some contractors build their own decons. They use wood, pipes, poly, spray glue, and tape. Some contractors use hard plastic decons. Others use decon trailers that go outside the building. An outside decon should be windproof and waterproof. Use plywood and six mil reinforced poly on the floor. Sometimes a separate decon is built for waste bags. Put a heavy duty fan with a HEPA filters at one end of the room. This is called a negative air machine. The fan pulls dirty air into the negative air machine. The HEPA filters catches any contaminants. All the air that leaves the room is clean. The negative air machine also pulls clean air in from across the workroom. It makes the room a little cooler. The number of machines needed is determined by the cubic feet of the enclosure. The total number of negative air machines must provide a minimum of four air exchanges per hour. One additional negative air machine must be on site as an emergency backup. The negative pressure enclosure must be tested before the job begins and before each shift. Negative pressure keeps contaminants inside the work area. Put up a barrier outside of the room. This will keep non-workers out. Hang warning signs on the barrier. The signs must look exactly like this one. The signs should be at eye level. They should be in a language that building users can read. This concludes our presentation on the construction of an abatement enclosure. We at OAI hope this video has provided an informative step in your environmental education training. Thank you.